Welcome back today. Um, I've been on hiatus. I've been traveling, doing a lot of things, uh, trying to bring a lot of things to the network. But um, I was told by the Somali community, or at least a couple of people in the Somali community, that I wasn't supposed to say set the high because set the high means talking to just one person, like, you know, me conversing with another person. And it's funny because actually I'm talking into a camera, so you could maybe consider this a person. I don't know. But I was told to say uh, set tie ten. Set tie ten. So maybe that's right or maybe that's wrong. But for today, until somebody, uh, you know, straightens me out and like tells me how to, to say it to everybody, how to say hello to everybody, I think I'll just say set to high or set to high once again to you guys. So today we will be talking about another Somali kingdom. Yo, we back, we back, we back, we back. So today we will be talking about the Sultanate of Ifat. The Sultanate of Ifat. The Sultan of Ifat was a Muslim uh, Somali state that flourished from 1285 to around 1415. And the kingdom ruled over, you know, parts of what is now Eastern Ethiopia, um, Djibouti, and Northern Somalia. And toward the end of uh, the 13th century, uh, the ruler known as Umar Walashma uh, gained power over the Muslim kingdoms of Eastern Shiwa. So, he gradually, you know, won over newly uh, formed states and territories that were Muslim, uh, such as um, Fatajar and Dawaro and uh, Shiwan and the Afar regions, um, which are the far, you know, of Ethiopia, but the Afar regions. So, including uh, the famous state of Adal, or Adal, the Sultanate of Adal, which I'll be talking about. Um, in another video, but yeah, so including that sultanate too. So he finally succeeded in gathering all the Muslim states together and creating a kingdom, and the kingdom we know, uh, know as is the kingdom of Ifat. Now, its army had 15,000 troops and uh, actually, I'm sorry, 15,000 horsemen, which are troops, you could say horsemen, troops on horse, you know, on a horse. But uh, they had 15,000 horsemen and they also had 20,000 foot soldiers. So it was definitely a, a, a kingdom. It was definitely a sultanate. It was, uh, you know, it was, they had everything. They had a kingdom. Uh, they were, uh, you know, had an army and they were a real kingdom, a very, very uh, um, historical kingdom as well. So uh, the Ifat kingdom was a bit against odds though, even though it had all these things. At the time period, uh, you know, this is in a time period where a lot of the Ethiopian uh, Christian states were trying to uh, combine and gather together and the Christian states were always warring with the Muslim states. Um, not always, but a lot of, you know, during that time when the, uh, the Muslim states were, you know, basically there was a group of people from time to time or people had the belief system of, you know, uh, Islam or the Muslim faith and then people had the Christian in the, uh, you know, um, the Christians and the Christian faith, you know, they were basically fighting over that area. Um, and, you know, they were different religions. They differed in opinion. And there was a lot of, um, uh, of noise and static for, you know, the Muslim uh, sector of that area because the Christians felt like, hey, you know, I don't want to be surrounded by Muslims and not to say that in a bad way, but they were Muslim states and, you know, they believed what they believed and they want to be converted just like the Muslims believe what they believe and they don't want to be converted. So, uh, you know, there was uh, also the kingdom of the Mat, uh, you know, they sort of used Ifat as subjects, you know, and they basically told the kingdom of Ifat what to do sometimes. And also the Christian kingdom, uh, you know, the Ethiopian Christian kingdom, did this as well, you know, sometimes they would come to Ifat and, you know, sort of, I don't want to say bogart Ifat, but they would tell them what to do and, you know, hey, do this, you know, we have a bigger uh, kingdom than you and, you know, we don't want no trouble, but yo, you do this sometimes when I tell you to do this, you know, things of that nature. So, uh, even though at times Ifat, you know, was free, even when they were free, you know, they still always had this to, to worry about the Ethiopia advancement or the Ethiopian kingdom advancement from the south uh, coming up and always, you know, causing conflict and in, in, in war and, um, you know, campaigns in, in that area and, and, uh, and trying to spread the Christian um, Christian religion. And I don't want anybody to, to think that this is, you know, one against the other, one's worse than the other. I'm just saying this is what happened and this is what it was at the time period. So, moving on. With uh, Christian states being you know, consolidated as well as in, you know, in the same area, tension 
is, was always boiling and there was always uh, fighting between Christian and Muslim states at the time and it was just very inevitable seeing that you know there was two different religions and it was just a, a race at the time you could sort of say a race for uh, different states uh, coming together that believed in different things and basically spreading the word of that religion around those areas so you know conflict happened so you know, between kingdoms so uh, one of the, the one of the Sultanates of a fact uh, in the you know northwestern um, Shiwan foothills was you know just it was one of the biggest sultanates and it was it's it's funny because with the Afat kingdom there was a lot of Muslim states and a lot a lot of the Muslim states were um, they were of, of, of different backgrounds and of different you know beliefs uh, as far as how to run things and, and things of that nature and different languages and too so there was never really unity amongst the kingdom so once the fat kingdom came together and this uh, sultanate um, or the Sultan, uh, you know, basically put them all together and brought them all together. It created unity, but they still had a lot of problem with taking care of things, you know, be just because of the differences between languages and, and different uh, other things in that aspect. So, uh, one of the Sultans of Ifat in the northwestern Shiwa foothills, like I said, and the lowlands along the Red Sea were also home to two other groups. Uh, and they were very important Muslim groups, which was the Afar ethnic group, as we know today, the Afar, and also the Somali ethnic group. And beginning in the 13th century, one of the biggest problems that, you know, they had to confront was the Christian kingdoms. And this was ruled by the um, Amhara. And this was a very big threat to the Muslim encirclement. And, um, you know, the, the Muslim encirclement was basically like the Muslim states that were starting to surround the Christian, you know, states that were within Ethiopia, Djibouti, and Somalia, but more so at that point in the uh, Ethiopian area on the border of like Djibouti now, nowadays in Somalia and the, you know, the, the, um, the uh, eastern part of Ethiopia. So at the time, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of ethnic groups and they, you know, were in the highlands of Ethiopia and they embraced Islam. And when they embraced Islam, you know, this was the basis of the powerful uh, Ifat kingdom that was created. You know, there was a lot of uh, different ethnic groups that believed in Islam at the time. And uh, this is what happened. This is all what led up to the Ifat kingdom. So when the Ifat kingdom was at its high, it still could, they, they still could never get along as far as, um, as far as agreeing on what to do all the time and how to go uh, to war because you know you had different states within this kingdom that were unified um, and but they also had problems with you know the, the language barriers and um, just different traditional things and how they went along doing it so you know when the Sultan uh, Hak, Ad, Hak Adin was where you know was warring against Ethiopia uh, you know the Ethiopian king Amda Amda soon conquered the Fat Kingdom in 1328 and the Fat was made tributary to Ethiopia and after that the you know after that event the Fat Kingdom was continually revolting against Ethiopia always revolting against Ethiopia and the Fat was a kingdom was finally destroyed in 1415 um, after its last attempt at independence under the Sultan's uh, you know, the, the, the Sultan Saad, uh, let me try to pronounce it, Saadin, Saad uh, and you know, his last attempt to fight against Ethiopia and the Christian kingdoms, uh, you know, was stopped by Yesh of Ethiopia. So the fact posed a major threat to the Christian kingdoms at that time in that area, but it was defeated. And this, like I said, this was mostly due to the difficult arrangement of ethnic groups. There's a lot of different kind of, uh, uh, you know, African ethnic groups around that area. And the language and the unity that was due to, you know, just the different dynamics of how many different kind of languages and how many different kind of people spoke different things. And the unity was never 100% there. It was there, but it was only there when it was time for war or it was time for, um, you know, time to do things, but even at that point, it was still hard to have unity amongst all those people because of language barriers and things of that nature. So, the Afat, uh, you know, supported 
or I'm sorry, their fat was supported by, you know, other sultanates, um, you know, a lot of mu Muslim pastoralists. And, you know, but for the most part, the independent states were divided by different languages and different cultures. And many of them spoke the Kushalic language, languages, and some spoke, um, uh, Semitic languages and you know some were cultivators some were traders and you know while others were pastoralists and the unity just wasn't there and you know you could you couldn't count on the unity you know beyond one single campaign or even to even coordinate a military you know uh, activity was very very difficult because of the language barriers and just the difficulties of, of, of the different kind of people and who they were and how they lived so that was a um, a short quick video about the fat kingdom uh the fat kingdom was one of many that somali had uh, or the sultanate of the fat and um yeah we're gonna keep going deeper and deeper into history and uh i know there's more sultanates that i'm going to do especially in somalia i'm going to do more of those and i hope you guys have learned a lot about the efat kingdom it was a it was it's one of those kingdoms it's funny because we think about it sometimes as every kingdom being um you know flourishing and being uh huge and big and then not that efat uh the the sultanate of efat wasn't but just if you look at the dynamics of what happened and you know the people that um uh, were in that kingdom in the, in the different states, you know, that were in the kingdom of Ifat or the Sultanate of Ifat. It's just very interesting. It's very interesting to look at how a it was a quick Sultanate, but you know, at the height of it, it was a very scary thing for a lot of um, surrounding Ethiopian uh, states that were Christian, and it was just a very very alarming thing. And it was it's just it's it's really interesting to me. You know, this was a very very quick kingdom that popped up and then sort of disappeared quickly, but it's definitely one that needs to be noted. As always, to all my Somali people, yo, one love, and to all my black people, all my African people around the world, we're gonna keep it moving, yo, we're gonna keep this knowledge going, and until next time, yo, I'm out of here. Peace. One love. <laughs> أيو دقن كوتاجية ما هو ماذا عب مالها ويعني بقولار صار كمانان صار للسوق بدبني للسوق بدو جيل بجيل السوق بدبني